Howdy folks, Kiwi here, and welcome back to Strange Gate. A safe space which would be awesome where uh, Ferris Chan seems to, or Tan, seems to not be listening to me today, even though I came from the future. You know, when you go, when you go to the future, when you go to the past from the future, and you're trying to convince somebody of something, there should be a system you work out with them beforehand so that they actually listen to you. <laughs> Um... Hello? <laughs> After a swift kick to my shin, Ferris turns her back to me in a huff. Damn you, cat girl. For once in your life, listen to me. Oh, wait, Mother. I said wait. I need you to win no matter what. Like I said, there's no way I can lose in the app. And I don't want Nya here to wear those ugly glasses, Nya. Ferris needs to be cured at every moment. My fans are counting on me, Nya. Crap, she's getting angry at me now. Ferris shakes me off and runs to the participant entrance. I'm not a participant, so if she makes it inside, then that's the end of it. Please hear me out. <laughs> Bearing the pain in my shin, I force my way in front of Ferris and stand in her way. Ferris, please. Mary's life depends on it. Okay. All right. This is not. This is not a good situation to be in. I want someone to come here and yeah, help me, man. Ferris suddenly starts shouting. She grabs the attention of the surrounding participants and spectators. Even staff members are gathering. Crap, I can't talk about time machines or Mary's life with this much attention around us. But unless I can get Ferris to listen to me, there's no way I can undo her D-mail. Which, again, is the thing she made up. <laughs> what should I do? You seem to have an awful lot on your, of time on your hands, eh, champion? That smug voice. Oh yeah, it's this asshole. Uh, Four Celsius, which is not a real name. A tall man dressed entirely in black walks up to us with a grin on his face. Whenever he takes a step, all of his silver accessories jingle. He dramatically takes off his sunglasses, revealing the face of that guy who gave me trouble before. If I'm not mistaken, he called himself Four Celsius or something stupid like that. <laughs> <laughs> Swooping down onto the street, I am the Black Peacock of the Rhinet Rel Rhinetto Realm. The name's for Celsius, that's Shido, you got me. Um, I'm the leader of the Viral Attackers. The Viral... The Viral Attackers. Mm, the Viral Attackers, I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's right, they're Ferris's opponent this match. They're trying to start a fight now. This is a guy who headbutts people out of nowhere. And he seems to hate Ferris for some reason. <laughs> Seriously, you disappoint me, champion. You flirt with the system, but that's just noise to my heart. And yet here you are, before the match, uh, soaking in the corrupted love of this worthless man. You put on the airs of a Siamese cat, but with the duel today, I'll dye that white fur of yours jet black, Gaia has thus whispered. The black cat is the sign of disaster. My, my black cat, Radiance, Jesus Christ, shall outshine your shadow, ushering in a new generation of Rhinet. Women are already slaves to the living rock mind that is myself. Fucking what? <laughs> I... I thought you were just boasting, but no, you're 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 that kind of person, and you know what? God damn it! <laughs> damn, this guy can talk, though I have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't think he knows. Ferris seems to be thinking the same thing. Why is everyone getting in Ferris's way, Nia? I can't hear myself think, Nia. But that said, she quickly tries to enter the hall, but I grab her hand to detain her. Ferris, I told you to wait. Pause off. I'm begging you, please listen to what I'm saying. Hey, don't you dare disregard the man closest to the truth of Rhyme. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is none of your business. Go away. 
The hell do you do say? Don't you know I'm the black nobleman of the Rivenet realm? Who cares? Were you the black peacock of the Rivenet realm? Get your story straight. I am the black peacock nobleman because black is the symbol of Rivenet. Promotional posters all over have a blue and white motif. It doesn't look like black is the image color to me. <laughs> oh, I get it. You, s you just like to say black. Also, uh, you know, Ferris has, has sort of walked away at this point. You think you're so smart. I'm hey, going to dye that pussy black before the duel even starts. Why? Like, I know I don't have to ask why. It's very clear. These, these kinds of guys are incredibly obvious in their motive. Like, there's literally no secrecy to the, what they want or desire or whatever. But, like, come the fuck on. Four Celsius approaches me with an angry look on his face. But I'm the one who should be angry. Mary's life hangs in the balance for something I believed at face value instead of, you know, thinking about it. Ferris isn't cooperating either. I can't believe this is happening. I'm gonna get this guy to go away. For a moment's consideration, I decide to face him as Hoi and Koim. Uh oh. You'll know what'll happen if you touch me. Dry ice burns. That's frostbite, you idiot. What? I'm telling you to stop messing with Ferris. Save your bullshit for someone who cares. It giggles from all around. <laughs> Well, they're laughing at you, you corrupt <laughs> pussy. La, la man? La ma. What the hell is a la ma? I think not. They're laughing at you, you pathetic peacock with a bald, bald spot on your head. What? How do you know about my untouchable black spot? I've never told anyone about it. Four Celsius faces. That uh, face turns red. Elementary 4 Celsius Yondo C I'm an insane mad scientist and traveler through time Nothing escapes the sight of Oi and Koyama <laughs> What in the fuck am I reading? The name Shido Now you've gone too far For the sin of insulting my ultra cool badass name I'll summon you to my garden The Black Hell just you wait. Oh my god. This scene is... Ah. Uh, I don't even want to say the word cringe because it's just that fucking cringy. Like, if real people talk like this on the street, they'd have eggs thrown at them. <laughs> Puts on his sunglasses and leaves. Consider that as payback for the headbutt. How did you know? <clears throat> How did you know about Forsyth's weakness? Weak point in the end, nobody's ever seen it. Have you been listening? I came from the future. Ah! So please, Ferris, take this stuff. Just hold on to it, okay? But there's no way Ferris can lose, Nya. You're stronger than them, no question, but you heard him just now. They're obviously going not going to play fair. They'll do anything it takes to win, even if it breaks the Ryanetter code. If you say so. Looks like my desperation paid off. Ferris reluctantly accepts the two I items I present to her. Of course, she doesn't take them out of the bag. I'm just going to hold on to them. Is that, is that okay, Anya? Yeah, just make sure you have them with you on the stage. I promise you'll need them. Sooner or later, she won't have a choice. Stein's choice. The immaculate, impeccable theme song of Rainet Kakuru plays through the hall, signaling the start of the finals. There's a kind of majesty to the scene. The tension of the crowd peaks as the, its voltage reaches a climax. Thanks for waiting, everybody. The finals are about to begin, and we'll see once and for all who the Rhinet Access Battler's Grand Champion is. Who is? These two teams are about to clash. First up, the defending champion, our queen, the Moe Maid Cat. Ferris! Nyan, Nyan. 
Alright. I thought you'd carry that last day a little more. Cheers. Oh, the noise. Ferris makes her entrance to thunderous cheering. She smiles brightly and waves to the audience. She really is like a queen. I know, most queens don't get this particular brand of, uh, um, I don't want to say fame or appreciation because those aren't the right words, but like, applause, I guess? That's not quite right either. Excitement, I suppose. I know she's not wearing the sunglasses I gave her. And now, the challengers, like a comet, they suddenly appeared, blazing across the starry sky, the dark horse neigh, the dark peacock of the Rynet world. This is their very first tournament. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Something on my glasses. But despite various troubles, including no show opponents, they have made it to the finals. They are the Black Absolute Zero, which is a really stupid name, not gonna lie. Absolute Black Zero would be considerably better. Um, uh, wrong button. Fire! There you go. I shouldn't have done that for Ferris, but you know what? I wasn't prepared. The viral attackers consists of 4C and some short guy with the same black letter leather fetish. Looks like a couple of punks straight out of Ikebukuro. I sit in stupefied awe as the excitement around me builds. Dara taps me on the shoulder. You gotta cheer for Ferris Tan too. Uh, sure. Oblivious to my anxiety, Darrow starts jumping and waving his hands in the air. Very stop! Very stand! Fairies! I still you! Is that Darrow? It says spectator A and B, but. Boy, right. boy! <laughs> Cameras flash as everyone tries to get a picture of the cat girl. I don't see a tail. Or fur, really. I'm going to give it my best, everyone, so cheer for me in the end. The speakers carry her cute, cheerful voice to every corner of the hall. Apparently, they gave microphones to both teams so that they could talk to the audience. <laughs> Service shot in the end. <laughs> Ferris puts on an impish smile and turns to the audience in a sexy pose. Whoa! Yelled everyone, I guess. The whole hall shakes with the audience's roar. Ferris's popularity is overwhelming. God, it's like fucking wrestling, pro wrestling. There it is! Yes, Ferris, it's me! Marry me! Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Dara's totally lost it. Like, I get it, it's like idol appreciation, but I don't uh, I don't understand idol appreciation just as a general thing. Like, yeah, you have celebrities you like, cool. I like Bill Murray. That doesn't mean I'm gonna fucking go scream his name, you know. I like uh who else do I like? That was the only name that really came to me immediately. Um Steve Martin, he's a great actor. Um Christina Aguilera, she's a great singer. Or was, I'm not sure what she's doing anymore. Uh, Halle Berry, you know, these these celebrities that are that are very, you know, renowned in what they do and very good at it, for the most part, you know, some of them bad, some of them good, whatever. That's a personal preference thing. But like it's like I'm not gonna worship them and yell, hey, marry me. That's 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 just not a you know, I'm not gonna judge you're probably gonna judge. That's just not what I would do. I wonder if Ferris will be alright. Judging from her enthusiasm, it certainly looks like she'll be fine. Once the cheering dies down, I speak to Dara. No. How come there are only two how come there are two viral hackers, but Ferris is all alone? What? You don't even know about that? Um, no. I would ask I'm asking a question, that means I don't know. I'm not familiar with the rules of Rynet access battlers. I dare explain them before the final started, but he only covered the basics. 
In this tournament, duels take place between two two-man teams, but since there's nobody strong enough to be Ferris Tan's duel partner, she goes alone. Doesn't that, like, break every rule? Two heads are obviously better than one, but Ferris can win despite her handicap, that's why I love her. These viral attackers, what sort of team are they? Hmm. I don't know the details, but apparently they're a pretty aggressive team. But other than that, there's a bunch of suspicious rumors about them. They've got a lot of followers, you see, and apparently they don't mind using those followers to interfere with their opponents during duels. About half the teams are faced in the championships with where were no shows. And that's not all. Apparently they even go around beating up Otaku in Akiba and Ikebukuru. Long story short, Ryanetters really hate them. Why haven't they been disqualified? Because there's no evidence. Ryanetters are mostly kids in otaku, just little intimidation from some guys in black and they clam up. Dude, you're done. You're, you're done. You're finished. You're puts. Um, I could have kept going with that. The viral attackers. Ferris told me that their interference cost for the game. As long as she's got the sunglasses and earplugs I gave her, she should be able to win. And if she wins, she might be able to recall the contents of the email she sent. At least that's what she said. You know, making it up on the spot. I need Ferris to win. Mary's life depends on it. I'm counting on you, Ferris. Ferris rises to the stage, heralded by thunderous cheers. And naturally, on the other side is 4C. They face off against the circuit mat. Across the circuit mat. How did teams work exactly? You can discuss with your partner what moves to make. It's harder for the opponent to predict what they're gonna do. So basically, the partner just plays a support role. Fair enough. Well, there's nothing to worry about. Ferris Tain can beat the daylights out of these punks with, their, with the blink of an eye. Yeah, so it's interesting. So, like, one of them's actually doing it, and the other one's kind of backseat gaming. <laughs> I've never seen that, like, in an official sense, but hey, there you go. Are both teams ready? The referee gathers Ferris and the two virals for a coin toss to decide who takes the first turn. And now, the Rhinette Axis Battlers Grand Championships Finals! Instantly, silence falls on the assembly hall. Everyone holds their breath in anticipation. I. Referee shout signals the start of the game. To mostly what sounds like mixed uh, reception. The room erupts in cheers. Oh, it's like a card game. First up is Ferris. The huge monitor hanging from the ceiling displays the circuit mat, the thing that looks like a chessboard. The cards glitter and sparkle in the stage lights. All cards on the board are face down, but each player is allowed to peek at his or her own cards. The cameras are oriented in a way that the audience can't see what cards they have. According to Daru, Ax Ryanet Access Battlers is a game of psychological warfare. It's all about figuring out where your opponent has placed the cards. Each player starts with four link cards and four virus cards for a total of eight cards face down on the board. The victory conditions are a little complex, but in short, if you win, you take four of your opponent's link cards, or if you make, um, or if you make your opponent take four of your virus cards. The game starts with each player trying to figure out how the other pl uh, has placed his or her cards. This sounds very basic. I don't know how they would make a giant tournament out of this kind of game. Knowing your opponent's layout lets you shift the game to your advantage. How? That's why it's important to be careful uh, what moves you make, whether you're attacking or defending. Your duel partner's there to make it harder for your opponent to read your thoughts. I watch as the duel between Ferris and the viral attackers unfolds before my eyes every time a link card or virus card is unve unveiled, revealed, waves of excitement ripple through the audience. I'm starting to understand how just how amazing Ferris must be to become champion all by herself. The audience is on the edge of their seats. As best as I can tell, it looks like the viral attackers are, true to their name, on the attack. What sort of strategy does Ferris use? I guess you could say she's a slow starter. She spends the first half focusing on reading her opponent's cards. She plays it safe. And instead, she waits until the end game for a sudden reversal. That's probably how she'll play it this time, too. 
You know, sometimes that works, but then you have players who play recklessly and you have to sort of go on the defensive. And when you're on the defensive in any strategy game, you're never in the good place. Trust me, I play a lot of chess. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, from Kiwi, even great to you and yourself. It's a delightful day. Goodbye.